What's up everyone? Welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. This is going to be another build video. This one is actually going to include two builds or well one build and a failed build that I just am briefly going to discuss. And both of these ideas are from comments on my liquid oxygen system. I'll go ahead and pop these up. There we go. So Hardcore says, no space stuff, liquid hydrogen, I dare you. And um, prior to this, reading this comment, I had actually already thought about maybe doing a system like this, but after, uh, I mean, after kind of thinking about what it would take, I tossed out the window. I was like, you know what? No, I don't think it's even possible, so I'm not gonna waste my time. But after reading this comment, I said, decided that I would actually give it a go and see if I could do it. Um, I did actually achieve it creating liquid hydrogen without any space material with, I guess, no exploits. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's not a system that is functional or that works. And we'll discuss it in a sec. So the second system is was suggested by Travis Newman, and he uh, talks about a system he wants to try and set up using um super coolant to cool hydrogen oxygen and sour gas on one cooling loop using doors to adjust the temperature that way he doesn't have that way you don't have to uh you know set up a different temperature sensor or a different cooling loop for each one to get the super coolant just the right temperature you can just get the super coolant as cold as you possibly can and then run it through three different or just run it through one loop and then cool all of them with that one loop so that's going to be the second system well, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, liquid hydrogen one first, the failed one, that is, because, well, it's failed. We're, I'm not going to go over everything. I'm just going to briefly discuss it. And if you don't want to see this part, I'll put a timestamp in the description where you can skip over it and go to the main system. So basically, the idea that I had for this was to cool a room down to near the, the condensation point of hydrogen. As you can see, it's almost... 252 here and then um, once that's done we would have a thermal regulator in the room and then we could then connect if I show you here then connect um, whoops I actually broke it instantly and then connect that uh, thermal regulator up and as you can see we did get liquid hydrogen and that's because it broke through the pipe and it was technically liquid hydrogen at that point that's why it broke the pipe um, but it was so cold in this room that it didn't really have anywhere to transfer its temperature to so it stayed as a liquid um, and then we can pump it out to an aqua tuner to cool it further and then into a reservoir but the problem with this which i didn't actually realize at the time was that i mean the main problem with doing this without super coolant is that there's nothing in the game that we can get cold enough through aqua tuners or regulators to actually condensate hydrogen so that's why we had to break the pipe to get it. And I thought if I could just get a little bit of liquid hydrogen to start off with, I could then run that through aqua tuner to cool down more hydrogen. Uh, but the problem that I ran into that I wasn't aware of is that the gap here from the vapor vaporization to the freeze point is only seven degrees. And an aqua tuner cools by 14 degrees. So even if it was at the very, very, very uh, lowest temperature here, or I guess highest temperature, um, you know, near the vaporization point and we ran it through an aqua tuner, it would still freeze in the pipe. There's just, there's no way getting around that. And as soon as I realized that, I was like, okay, this isn't possible. I'm done. So if anybody has a way that could, that actually makes this possible without using exploits, I know of the exploit uh, where you can put, you know, a small amount, you can use a valve to reduce the amount that is in the pipe and it won't actually stay in, change states. But I kind of wanted to do it without exploits, but yeah, we have 11 kilograms of hydrogen, but I believe the only reason that is, is because, I mean, you can see here, it's below, it's clearly below the freezing point. Um, and I believe that's just because we were pumping very small amount through, so it didn't actually change states because it was such a small amount. But that's the failed system. Um, did spend a little bit of time on it, but it was kind of fun. Um, and I gave it my best shot, but yeah, I just don't think it's possible to do that without super coolant. So let's move on to the next system. Uh, we'll go ahead and start top to bottom here. I realize I have a problem of just kind of skipping over some things and not really explaining them fully. And if you see that in the video, don't hesitate to point it out to me and let me know, hey dude, you need to explain this because not all of us know it. Uh, because I just, I, 
I know in a couple of previous videos, I've had these like turbine rooms set up and I haven't really discussed them because I just kind of assumed everybody's already seen the video of how to set this stuff up. And that's just not the case. Not everybody has. So I should probably just briefly explain how these work. So I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to try to start doing that. And like I said, if I, if I forget something, don't hesitate to remind me in the comments. So the way this works is we pumped two kilograms of hydrogen per tile into this room. So if you just pump, make sure it's a vacuum first. You want to start out with a vacuum. You just throw a regular gas fan in here and just start pumping hydrogen until it reaches max pressure and then you're good to go. And after that, you want to add your water. Now, the amount of water depends on how big the room is, uh, but a good rule of thumb is five kilograms per tile or three times the amount of hydrogen you've used. So if you don't want to add up the hydrogen, then you can just do five kilograms per tile or whatever. But I think I've got like 500 kilograms in this room, which eh, it's not exactly a three to one ratio, but it works out. Um, and this second turbine in, in this system, I don't think you actually need it. In fact, I haven't even seen it run, I don't believe. Uh, but I was getting some overheating issues, so I added another one just in case. And essentially, if you put this turbine over the aqua tuners, it, it, you just have one turbine in here over the directly over the aqua tuners, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, but two of them just in case, right? Redundancy. Anyway. Let's move on. So we've got three regulators, one for each type of gas. We've got sour gas, oxygen, and hydrogen. And these aren't even actually being used that much, at least the oxygen and the sour gas. And I'll discuss why uh, later once we explain the cooling loop. But let's go. The way they're set up is exactly like the liquid oxygen system, which if you haven't seen, I'll put a link in the corner here that you can check out over here. Um, but this is how they're set up. So this is the input pipe right here. This would be a bridge, as you can see over here, where it would be introduced into the cooling loop. Cooling loop goes through the regulator into a valve. If it's not cold enough, it continues to circulate. And because we have a bridge here, if the output, or if there's already gas on the output, it's not gonna, it's not gonna pump more gas in here. So the line will continue to circulate until things are cold enough to actually get pumped out, at which we would introduce new gas. So that's how we've got all three of these lines set up not super complicated there and we'll go over the settings in a little bit uh, let's discuss the aqua tuners first though so we needed actually two sort of cooling loops for this aqua tuner system the first one um, gets our super coolant down to a temperature of around 252 let me see what this is at yeah around 250 so um, we want to get it as close to i think 252 as possible so we could we could lower this more but 250 works fine. And the reason for that is once we run it through the second aqua tuner, it's going to cool that down by 14 degrees. But we're not going to average that out with anymore because we want that super coolant as cool as we possibly can get because that's what's cooling the hydrogen down. So once it comes out the second loop, it's going to be around negative 266. So this first one, um, let me see if I can select this. So if it's below negative 250 degrees from this first aqua tuner loop, it's going to go through this valve and go through a second temperature check. Uh, this temperature is set to above at negative 252 and the reason for that is if it's colder than negative 252 and we pump it through this aqua tuner it's going to freeze in the pipe and break so we want to be able to bypass it if it's too cold and send it back through these other lines to actually warm up a little bit before we pump it through there and this is why these regulators aren't actually being used a lot um, by the way, before we jump into that, we do have some bridges here that are important. Well, mainly just one. Uh, this bridge right here coming from this aqua tuner is, well, it's just a bridge setting in, into the input into the reservoir. And that's important because we want to drain this line first before we actually pump more in from the aqua tuner. That way we don't have a super coolant here sitting here. We want it, we want it all in the reservoir when we're adding coolant to it. So just make sure that bridge is there. And then this bridge is there just so we don't have water flowing from here up to here. I mean, I think that one's self-explanatory. So the reason these regulators aren't running as much is because we're not actually cooling the oxygen and sour gas down very much. Um, we've only got them set to 40 degrees right now. So um, if the temperature is above 40 degrees, then we'll continuously cool them. So as long once it gets below 40 degrees, that's when we start pumping it in. Can see we're actually at six degrees but uh, we're coming in at 19 so it goes through once 
Um, but yeah, the reason for that is because if we tried to cool those gases down like right to the condensation point as close as we could get, they wouldn't actually be heating the super coolant up very much and it wouldn't actually get down to the it wouldn't get hot to the, hot enough to actually run through this aqua tuner line to actually cool down the hydrogen um, I, I mean it would take a very long time to do so and hydrogen's probably the hardest part to get out of this as you can see oxygen is the easiest um, and methane's pretty simple as well but cooling the uh, super coolant down to the point where it'll actually cool the hydrogen down or well, condens condensate the hydrogen is actually a little harder so we need to actually heat this super coolant up otherwise it'll stay around it'll stay up below uh, 252 for quite a while we won't actually be making liquid hydrogen quite as fast so these regulators aren't being used very much just a little bit um, and then they draw the heat out of that cooling line there by the way all of the refined metals are all gold aside from the, the regulators and octuners are steel. Everything else is made of gold. The metal tiles are gold. The doors are wolframite. Um, so if you're wondering, yeah, it's all gold. Um, so let's move on to the cooling chambers themselves. So as you can see, this first aqua tuner, or the second aqua tuner, is the only one cooling down the hydrogen because it's the only one getting cold enough to condensate it. It then joins the regular line and goes through. Now this door is not actually being used on the hydrogen. I, I tried it with the door. It just it wasn't very effective it wasn't cooling fast enough and we don't really need the door with the hydrogen because we're not getting cold enough to freeze the hydrogen we're not getting to that 200 negative 269 degree mark or 259 degree mark um, because the hydrogen in here is pulling the temperature out and then condensating so it's never going to get cold enough to freeze so we don't actually need the door we can just direct pipe it right into the room and that's going to be the best way to do that the other ones we are using the door and I forgot to actually move these thermo sensors. I mean that the hydrogen doesn't matter but they should be up here in the corner because once they get submerged in liquid they don't actually work very well. There we go make sure these are all set okay they're set. So yeah the cooling loop goes through the doors transferring to the metal tiles and then transferring to the air. Um, for the oxygen we've got it set at below negative at 190 so if it's colder negative 190 in here the door will open stopping the transfer for the sour gas we've got it set at negative 170 same kind of thing goes there um, so what else do we have in this room well we've got some feedback vents here so this is essentially for the oxygen and hydrogen I don't know if you would ever use a feedback loop for methane but maybe you'd need it I don't know uh, it's not like we're we don't have room in here so I just went ahead and added it um, and the reason for it on the hydrogen and stuff is if you want to pump your rocket full of hydrogen, well, you don't want the hydrogen. Once it gets full, the line's going to start backing up, right? We don't want that because it'll warm up and then start breaking pipes. So we've got this system set up here. Uh, this is a memory toggle. We've got a clock sensor set to the active port of the memory toggle, and this turns on and off the pump. So once we're ready to fill our rocket, we take this boom turn it on the pump starts pumping let me actually reduce this we're just going to reduce it just for an example uh, we'll just, so we'll just do 100 kilograms here so once we have 100 kilograms uh, the tank will fill up right and then after that it won't have anywhere to go on this port so it'll bypass that and go through this line now once this element sensor detects hydrogen it's going to reset the memory toggle turning off the pump and we'll see that happen here Boom. So now the pump stops. Any liquid left in this line goes back to the feedback vent and back into the line. That way we don't have hydrogen sitting in here, heating up, breaking, and, and all the bad things. So that's the feedback system. Uh, that's why the room is really this big, so we can have the vent and some other things that we'll discuss in a second. Thirdly, we have this. Let's just get rid of this because it's kind of confusing. We actually don't need this for the hydrogen room. Um, this hydro sensor is actually pretty important though so if we manage to build up our liquid up to this point here uh, this hydro sensor will trigger shutting off the uh, regulators stopping the gas input so we've built up enough uh, storage we don't really need any more um, so we'll we're going to shut off the regulators until we actually use up the material that we have and do this 
Um, and you could set up a similar system over as I have over here, like a storage system, uh, sort of like this, but it just takes a really long time to cool down because you're going to need three of them instead of one. Um, unless you wanted to like store a lot more oxygen or something, you just wanted to set up one, then you could do that. But uh, essentially, you can really make these tanks as big as you want and just store a lot. And you can see we've got quite a bit in here, so we don't really need extra storage. I think this is plenty. Um, so we just go ahead and contain it in here. That way we don't have an extra thing we need to cool down. And then it goes on with the pumps and... Uh, you know, you can pump it out to wherever you want and then run it back through the feedback loop. The methane does have an auto sweeper because as you can see, we're producing, <laughs> we're producing sulfur rather rapidly. I kind of, this is kind of actually nice to look at. Might get annoying after a while though. Uh, but so yeah, we do have the auto sweeper in here so we can sweep the sulfur away and cool something else down because you can see the sulfur is rather cold, negative 154. So we can pump that away or uh, sweep that away and use it to further cool stuff down. I don't know if I discussed, but the oxygen up here is set at negative 190. I think I did. I think I did. Negative 190, negative 170 oxygen and methane, respectively. Um, and then one more point before we end this here. The insulated tiles I put because I was actually getting the oxygen freezing. Um, yeah, I was getting the liquid oxygen. The oxygen was actually freezing because it was getting too cold uh, when these tiles were connected. So I added some insulated here to kind of separate the bottom chamber from the top of the chamber because we're really just trying to freeze or con condense the gas once it's to that gotten to that point to where it's condensed then it's cold enough and we don't really have to cool it down any further so we've kind of separated those that way and that is going to be the system i don't believe i missed anything uh, if you enjoyed this video if you liked it if you learned anything hit that thumbs up i do appreciate it if you have any questions suggestions anything at all if i miss something you're curious about leave them in the comments below i do read them all and i do reply to them all thank you for watching and i hope you all have a wonderful day